All right, so welcome to the third video in this series on harmony. In the last video, we covered seventh chords and how they can be used in both functional harmony and voice leading. In this video, we're going to continue our conversation by looking at tensions and harmonic avoidance notes. We'll learn what they are, how we can find them, and of course, how we can use them. As usual, we'll conclude by looking at their impact on both voice leading and functional harmony. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my amazing patrons who are helping to make videos like this possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description of this video. All proceeds go towards helping me make tuition payments for school. And with that, let's get started. So first off, what are harmonic extensions? Well, extensions are notes that we can add to the chords that go beyond the typical first, third, fifth, and seventh that we've seen so far. These notes tend to contribute a ton of personality to your harmony. They're not very common in most musical genres, so they can be a very powerful tool for trying to introduce a sense of ambiguity or nostalgia to your music, because they don't have the same kind of associations that we have with, say, a major triad being happy or a minor triad being sad. Finding extensions is super easy. It's just a simple matter of continuing our skip add technique from earlier. So starting with our C major seven chord, we'll skip the eighth, which is an octave. Then we'll add the ninth. We can also skip the 10th and add the 11th. And then finally, we can skip the 12th and add the 13th. These three notes, nine, 11, and 13 are our extensions. Now here's something pretty cool. Each of these three extensions are actually the very same notes that we had previously skipped in our add skip strategy. They're just an octave higher. For example, we skipped the second scale degree, but now it's being used as our ninth. The fourth is our 11th, and our sixth is now our 13th. See how that works? And this actually helps lead us to the next topic, which is how do we actually use these extensions? Well, the first thing we need to understand is that not all extensions are actually useful for every chord. In fact, extensions are typically divided into two distinct groups, determining whether they are or are not useful to us. These groups are called tensions and harmonic avoid notes, or hans. Tension tones are extensions that are useful to us because they don't create too much dissonance when added. Harmonic avoidance notes are extensions that aren't necessarily as helpful because they do cause some significant dissonance when added to a chord. Fortunately, it's pretty simple to figure out which notes are tensions and which ones are hans. A tension will typically be a whole step above the previous scale degree, while a hans will be a half step. Now, this rule isn't all encompassing, but it is a fantastic way for getting started. Let's take a quick look at a practical example. Here we have our C major seven chord taken from the key of C major. We want to sort our ninth, 11th, and 13th to figure out which ones are tensions and which ones are harmonic avoidance notes. Remember that each of these extensions has an equivalent that is an octave lower. I personally find it more helpful to use these equivalent pitches when sorting these notes. So since our nine is the same note as a two, let's compare our second scale degree to our first. The note right before D in the key of C major is a C. D is a whole step above C, so that means our ninth is a tension. We can just go ahead and add it to the chord if we want to. Next, our fourth is an F in the key of C major. Now, this one is only a half step above the third, which is E in this instance, which means that our 11th is a harmonic avoidance note. As the name suggests, we want to avoid using this note in our chord because it can make it sound much, much more dissonant. This is because the F forms a minor ninth interval with our third scale degree if used as an 11th. This is a super dissonant interval, which isn't typically desirable in most music. 
However, if you do like this kind of thing, please feel free to use it. None of this information is written in stone. And at the end of the day, your music is your own, to do with as you please. However, please keep in mind that everything I'm covering in these videos is considered standard and best practices in modern composition. So I recommend getting familiar with these concepts before trying to reinvent the wheel and do your own thing. So with that being said, let's continue. Our sixth is an A in the key of C major, which just happens to be a whole step above G, which makes our 13th another tension. So go ahead and add it to the chord if you want. Now, if we were to follow this pattern for the full major key, we would find that all the chords and their tensions work as follows. Please note that there is one big exception to the rules we've discussed so far. In the chord built on our second scale degree, the sixth does in fact sit a whole step above the fifth. However, since it forms a tritone with the third, it's considered too dissonant to be a tension, and is instead uh, categorized as a Hans. Other than that, everything else follows the rule that we've learned. So if we were to look at a minor scale, the extensions would look like this. Now, before we move on to how these extensions impact our approach to voice leading and functional harmony, I do want to clarify something real quick. This concept of harmonic avoidance notes relates purely just to harmony. You can use any of these notes in your melody, most typically as either neighbor tones or passing tones, and they can bring incredible personality to your music. They only start to become more problematic when you try to sustain them in your chords or other background material. So don't overthink it. As long as your chord progression avoids any Hans, then you should be in the clear. So moving on to the last section of this video, let's consider how many of these notes impact our functional harmony. And surprise, surprise, they don't. We can continue to use these chords in conjunction with our approach to functional harmony, which is just wonderful because the less complicated things have to be, the better, at least in my opinion. However, once again, we need to adjust our approach to voice leading when we use these chords. So remember that in quote unquote good voice leading, we want to maintain the same number of voices across our harmonic progression. Whether we're working with three voices and a bass line, or four voices and a bass line, we want to remain consistent. So far, we've covered three closely related approaches to voice leading that can help us to accomplish this. We have our more traditional contemporary voice leading, which we covered in the first video, and then in the last video, we introduced both three-part closed with independent bass and four-part closed with independent bass. Each of these approaches can still work for us when we introduce our tensions to the mix. In fact, either three-part close or four-part closed are going to be the approaches that I recommend to you. But this brings up an issue. Which notes do we include? Both approaches account for only four distinct notes. But some of these extended chords have six or even seven notes that we can work with. So which ones do we exclude? Well, the solution to this is a concept called tension substitution. The premise of tension substitution is that not all notes in a chord are of equal importance in the upper voices. For example, the root is almost always in the bass line when using these types of chords because inversions are typically avoided since we can easily lose our sense of tonality when using so many different notes in just one chord. Since the root is already in the bass line, we can use the ninth in the upper voices instead, essentially substituting the ninth for the first. Likewise, the fifth is widely considered to be a very neutral sounding pitch in a chord, in that it doesn't actually contribute as strongly to the function of a chord, at least not as strongly as the first and third. So we can actually remove it and substitute the 13th instead. These two substitutions, the 9th instead of the 1st and the 13th instead of the 5th, are the most common types of tension substitutions. They can easily be used to help voice lead our chords with either 3-part close or 4-part close strategies. 
Now, the obvious expectation is that you only use these substitutions if the 9th and or 13th are actually available in the first place as tensions. So with this in mind, let's see how we might go about voice leading a chord progression that actually uses extended chords. All right, so here we have a very simple four bar chord progression. So here we've got chords with all their extensions built off the first, second, fifth, and then first scale degree. We've got a C major seven with a nine and a 13. We've got a D minor seven with a nine and an 11. We have a G dominant seven with um, both the nine and 13 again, and then back to C major seven, but this time I've only added the nine. I left out the 13 because I felt the, just adding the nine gave a little stronger sense of a home or tonic or a tonal center. So let's give this a quick listen to. There we go. So lots of extended harmonies. And you might not use this many in your own chord progressions, but it's still something I figured, well, it's a video about extended harmony, so not, why not use a bunch? So step one for our chord voicings or voice leading is we've got to establish our bass line. So for now, we're going to pick a very simple one and just double the roots an octave lower. In fact, I'm going to drop it as two octaves for now just to give us a little more room up here. So now we've got our bass line. The next step is we need to try and figure out how many voices we want. Typically, just four voices in the upper registers, all right, these upper voices. Right now we have six to five in everything. And uh, that can be very complicated when you try to orchestrate a piece, all right? If you're working with just piano, go for it. But if you want to eventually arrange it, you want to try it. Well, you can if you want, but it's it'll make your life a lot easier if you're just working with four different voices. All right, trust me on that. So first, this first one, we have a nine and a 13. We've got the root in the bass already. So we can remove the root, which means that we'll make room for our nine. Now we want our 13, so let's remove the fifth, since it's a very neutral sounding note, and see how these four voices with our root sound. Very nice. So that pretty much helps maintain the sound we're looking for while making it a bit more manageable, a lot easier to work with. So this next one, we've got the D minor seven with an added, add, uh, with an added nine and 11. So, um, you know, I included the 11 here originally, but now that I'm realizing it, we didn't actually discuss tension substitutions for 11s. So let's just get rid of the 11 for now. And then let's get rid of our root to make room for the nine. So now we have our D minor seven with the added nine. And yeah, that'll give us four voices. So let's give that a quick listen to. All right, excellent, we're getting there. So next we have the G dominant seven. And so we've already got the G in the bass line, so let's remove it from the upper voices. Now we have the nine and the 13, so let's remove the fifth and now we can use our 13. Let's give that a quick listen to. Excellent, all right, last one. So we have the C major seven with a nine. So that's technically just a C major nine chord. All right, so let's remove the C. It's already in the root. And look at that, since we only had five notes to begin with, that automatically brings us to our four that we're working with. So now the next step is to just try and voice lead. So the first thing we're gonna look for is any common tones across the chords to be in the same voice. So we have an A and an E in both these two, first two chords. Our third chord also has an A, and look at that, an E. So let's bring that down. We can choose which register to put these in later, but for now, this and then the last chord just has an E. So let's actually take these E's and pop them up here out of our way, because now we have these other voices to voice lead. So we have D to C, B to F. So B to F, that is a one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's a tritone. We want to avoid that kind of movement. So what we're gonna do is D to F, which is a third. Remember, we wanna try and go for steps when possible, but a third is a good second choice. We wanna try to avoid any movement larger than that third. So D to F is a third, B to C is a step. So that works for us. Oh. Awesome, because it also brings up a uh, uh, common tone that I had missed earlier. We have an F in both of these chords here. So B to C, C back to B, D to F to F. 
So now, let's see, did I miss any others? Okay, it doesn't look like it. We've got, oh, yes, the B right there. So now we have A to G and F to D. Now we could move the D up here, but that would be a perfect fourth interval, whereas F to D is just a minor third. So the thirds are better than fourths in terms of voice leading. So let's lift this bass line back up one octave and let's quit. Oh, I almost forgot. We want to make sure that the bass line is moving in the opposite direction as the top voice whenever possible. And if not possible, we want to try and just keep them the same. So right now, um, actually, yeah, it's looking like this arrangement actually works pretty well for us because C to D is moving up. These two voices also move up. So we want to avoid those. These two don't move, which is better than moving in the same direction. Um, D to G is the same thing. We would have that, but, uh, so what I'm seeing is probably either this bottom line or this top line would work best, but I don't usually like having just simple sustain notes in the soprano, but why not? Let's give it a quick listen to. All right, yeah, I actually like that. So there we go. Simple, easy, it follows the steps that we've established so far in the previous videos. This is a perfectly acceptable way to voice lead these chords. And with that, we've reached the end of another video in this series. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone else that you think would enjoy it. This video was made possible by the incredible generosity of my patrons on Patreon who gave me the idea for this series and have continued to support me as I work on creating new content for each of you. So thank you very much to each of you for supporting me and my work. Also, thank you to each and every one of you who have sent me such incredibly kind and supportive comments and emails. Your support means the world to me and it helps keep me excited to put out new content. So in the meantime, keep studying, keep working hard, and as always, keep writing new music.